Tired of asking why? Welcome to the Unresolved Life Podcast, where we are answering life's most difficult questions. Now, here's your host, Teresa Blaze. Welcome to the Unresolved Life Podcast. I'm Teresa Blaze, and today I have a very, very special guest. It is an honor to have this gentleman with us. Uh, his name is Pastor Larry Dean. I've known him or had the privilege of knowing him for about 10 years. Um, he is, just to kind of give a little bit of background, um, he was the former chaplain for the X Games. He now runs a ministry called Extreme Life Ministries, and out of that comes like various uh other deals that he's probably doing you you call him and he's probably got his hand in something so but pastor it is a pleasure to have you on the show well it, I, the pleasure is all mine i was going to say uh you know you and michael are uh, two of my favorite people in the world too just representing the lord and uh it's my honor to be to be on here with you for sure well uh today you know, we're going to go ahead and write a piece of poetry. And then Pastor, he uh, con contacted me. He had a uh, an, a p piece of scripture that he also wanted to kind of base things off of. So, and, I, and as I read the scripture, it just seemed to fit with the piece of poetry that I had selected. So, uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and read this piece. And we'll kind of go off of that. So, awesome. um, it's called My Only Hope. Hmm. How can I be angry at my only hope? Raise my fist in protest when my own history shows. Many points I should have died, but his intervention is, is now my reason for being. A child of the king. Oh, my friend, how can I make you understand? God is not to blame for your tragedies. He did not cause them. E evil was not his design. He did not author wickedness. His plans are not mine. How can you still be angry when you consider who he is? Then consider this. Torture mockery nails driven through wrists, all mm. for the sake of all-consuming love. But I do not understand his ways. Where was he when? His answer, right beside you, even at the deepest of pits. And I'll just say I wrote that ahead of plenty of experience with uh walking through that situation of god i you don't make any sense whatsoever you mind explaining why you weren't there or why you didn't <laughs> sure and i mean i mean so where to start with that i mean i guess that would be the first question that a lot of people come to when they come to the Christian faith, well, if God is a good God, where was he when? Right. So sure. What would your answer to be to, and obviously, you know, we could name a bazillion situations, but what would you say to something like that? If, I mean, if you were talking to someone. Yeah, it's uh, that really is the, one of the questions that people wrestle with uh, in the Lord and out of the Lord and it really, um, I love what Pastor Bob Beeman says. He says, you know, to really understand God's ways or his nature or his style or how he does things, uh, always go to the cross. Always go to the cross, the cross of Jesus. You know, the the paradox of, you know, uh, the, the son of God, you know, the, the representation of God in the earth uh, who is with the Father and the Spirit. Uh, you know, the Trinity of God forevermore, the creator came to the earth that he created. And there's the son of God dying on the cross and the father allowing him to suffer and sacrifice. Um, we say it this way, that the cross was um, all in one place. Um, you know, the, the greatest good and the greatest bad that the earth has ever known. And mm. um, that's God's style. And, you know, the, the great, the great promise of Romans 8.28, and we know that all things work together for the good of them that love God to them that are the called according to his purpose. And so um, I think it takes, a you know, you and I, when I listened to that, uh, that poem, which was really awesome, by the way, um, we have a depth of maturity of seeing God get us through things. And we've seen, you know, we've been in the middle of a valley going, 
wow, this is, this is ugly, gnarly, and rough. And, but we've come through the valley, like Psalm 23 says, yea, though I walk through the valley, I'm not hanging on in it. I'm sure not going to get stuck in it, but I'm going through the valley. And when we get through that valley, we, we know something more about God. We have a greater faith and trust in the Lord. We know more about ourselves. And, um, you know, to, to someone who's going through a gnarly situation, you have to ask yourself, you know, um, God is sovereign. He's providential. I mean, he's in control and God allows things to happen. And why did God allow this to happen? And why am I in this situation? And it's, it's, it's to know him. It's to, it's to experience him. It's to, um, you know, learn, uh, the benefit of, of turning things over to God and, and doing his word and walking in his ways. But uh, that's such a huge question. I would say it's so important to be led uh, by the spirit in, in a life by life, uh, ministry by ministry situation, because not everybody needs the same thing or the same emphasis or the same word. Some people, they need to be less anxious and, and just rest and, and, you know, seek God, listen for God. Some people, you know, they've, they've listened for God long enough and it's like, okay, just get busy doing what, you know, God has told you to do. Um, but I know we're, you know, doing a podcast and it's, it, it's more generalized, but, um, I think the Holy Spirit wants us to realize we're in very difficult situations and the Lord is constantly waking us up to mm. more of him, uh, waking us up to, uh, something about ourselves, uh, 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 you know, constantly waking us up, wake up calls. And, uh, we've just been in a, a huge season of identifying whether it's sickness or loss of a loved one, loss of a friend, a loss of an opportunity or a job or a home. And you see all these wake up calls where God is trying to wake us up to realize, um, that he's, our, he is our only hope. Um, and uh, it, it, the breakdown is never on his end. The breakdown is always is, is always on our end. And I, I kind of want to step back because that seems like a wonderful uh, message for someone who might already be a Christian. OK, or someone who already says, well, I'm a follower of Christ. And right. but I also understand and respect those that are not believers, OK, that are not necessarily as they would see it religious and so they may be reading something like that and going oh please come on are you telling me that your god is all good and knowing and sovereign and yet you stare at something like evil in the world and you're telling me he's still a good god please are you guys delusional well i think yeah i mean right and i mean i have all kinds of action plans that pop up when when I think about encountering somebody like that. And one of the things that pops up is, you know, that we are the difference, you know, like uh second Corinthians three, three says that our life is a written epistle read and known by all men. And so, you know, they're looking at us go through something and being real, you know, not being fleeting or flippant or just instant, like, you know, like, Oh yeah, I had that down, you know, I, that was my disposition for like a day and a half. And then, you know, on the second day, you know, you know, heck with that, you know, it's like, I'm going to do my own thing and so much for trusting the Lord. But when people see us hang in there, um, they, they get a, they get a witness, you know, something shows them. It's like, man, something caused that guy to hang in there. And, um, you know, again, if someone doesn't have the spirit of God, they're, they're not going to have the, the, primary resource to be able to recognize God, recognize the kingdom, recognize uh, what God is up to. You know, like Christ told Nicodemus, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And, um, you know, when someone says, oh, you're telling me you're believing in this God, you know, always, you know, refer to the fact that, uh, you know, Romans 8, uh, Romans 8, 32 says, how shall he who spared not his only son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he and with him freely give us all things? That God, you know, the greatest nemesis of the human race is is death. And then after death, you know, judgment and wrath and the second death. Um, 
And God has dealt with that so personally, so powerfully, so completely through his son on the cross. And um, it's like, listen, if God met your greatest need so powerfully, so completely, um, you know, we can live certain when we understand the cross and the resurrection of Jesus, that 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 is how he's going to meet our every need. Every need in the human scope is lesser than um, our need to be forgiven and to be made right with God through faith in the blood of, of the Son of God. And so, um, you know, I don't know if that completely answers the question because I know what you're saying. It's, it's like, you know, you, we want to, you know, the best help is, I think the most important help is like for those who don't know the Lord and that, that you know, it's like, it's a faith thing. Yeah, you've got to just know that if God loved you so much that he gave his son to die on the cross, that he does care for you. Uh, you do matter to him. I mean, look what God did. He watched his son writhe in agony on the cross, suffering in our place because of his great love for us. And you know, God's love just is. Um, we can't earn it. We don't deserve it. And we can't make it go away. And that's something that the spirit of God has to do in somebody's heart. I, you know, um, I think there's a great place for testimony. Um, but you know, it's, it's the Lord's job to draw someone to him. And if they don't have the spirit, they're not going to be able to identify with, with what we would share about how God got us through and how God used the gnarly situation for our good and his glory. You know, and I think, um, hearing that, what I'm hearing you say is, you know, because I go back to that verse that says all things are work together for the good to those that love God. What I also mm-hmm. hear in that verse is that does not necessarily apply to the person that doesn't love God. Yeah, you have to exactly, you know, to, to activate that promise, you have to be his, you know, to him who, you know, to those that are the called according to his purpose, to them that love God, that is, that is the criterion. And, um, that's absolutely correct. And, uh, you know, and I think that might be a great way to challenge somebody. It's like, man, you know, life is hammering you and I can relate. I'm so sorry you're going through this, but I do know that God uses gnarly situations, um, to show us that we need him. And, um, I mean, Jesus was so honest about, you know, you know, in John 16, 33 says, you know, my peace I give into you. Um, and while you're in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And um, I think that's a great invitation to someone like, listen, God wants to be, he's your, you know, he is our sin bearer and he wants to be your burden bearer. And if he bore your sin, you know, why wouldn't he bear your burden now and give you wisdom and, and, and guidance through that? And to make, I mean, it blows me away that the promise that we're talking about here and we know through prayer, that all things work together for the good of them that love God. God can take gnarly, a devastating, um, heart-wrenching, life-crunching things and make them work for good. Only God can. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, of course, that's the invitation. I, again, the cross, it's the greatest bad and the greatest good all in the same place. You know, the, the sinless Savior suffering for sinful mankind. It's like an in, the grossest injustice of all time, but it's God's style. God did that for us. And um, that's the sign that Jesus said would be given. You know, the Jews asked for a sign and he said, no sign will be given except the son of man uh, in the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, like Jonah was in the belly of the whale. And, and so, you know, anything that can help someone understand the cross and, um, you know, you and I believe that God, um, he uses things um, to break people down mm-hmm. and to show them I can, the, I can, the foolishness yeah. of, of a godless direction. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and, and, and so that we capitalize on that as, as witnesses and as ministers of his, as, as his representatives, as his ambassadors. You know, it's like, you know, those hard times are opportunities to share the hope that is in Christ. Uh, you know, even that you made mention of that section of scripture, you know, it's. It's from Lamentations, which is, you know, as, as poetic, uh, you know, uh, as, a, as a place in Scripture as we have with the Psalms and um, certainly some of the Proverbs and Lamentations is a, literally a funeral dirge 
about Israel going into captivity. It was not a good, it was, a, you know, it was a mourning over the nation being in captivity mm. and losing their freedom for 70 years. And, um, you know, in the middle of it, um, he just says, you know, he basically just says, God is our only hope, you know, which, as you said before, very strongly parallels uh, to the poem that you wrote. You know, and the, th- the thing is, I, 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 I think about this and I think about the cross and I think about, you know, um, what God has done in my life. And I mean, I'm not going to say uh, I am not going to say there aren't some places where I am still kind of going. Yeah, but God, this doesn't work. This doesn't make sense. I still have those places, even as a Christian. See, that's one of the biggest things I can honestly encourage is just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean I have, I all of a sudden everything just gets smoothed over, um, whether it be emotionally or um, uh, spiritually or, or whatever. Um you know, it doesn't mean that everything just suddenly gets smoothed over and you don't have areas that you have to wrestle. But what I am learning, and I guess this kind of goes back to uh, your passage as well in Limitations, is, you know, if God is my only hope, then he's also going to help me get through those places, right? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, yeah, right. I mean, that's... <sighs> But you know, but but I'm, I, I I guess to to the person that's the believer, I guess I think our biggest our biggest encouragement, and, for, and if I'm wrong, you know, please correct. But our biggest encouragement is hang on. And if you're not a believer, then you have to ask yourself: Are you getting? I mean, I get it. Life is giving you a raw deal, and it sucks. But wouldn't you rather have a uh, 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 someone to kind of walk with you through it? <laughs> yeah, sure. You know, and, and again, that's just, you know, as, as people are praying for their, you know, their family members and their friends and neighbors that don't know Christ, you know, um, c- circumstances, you know, break up the follow ground, break up the soil in a heart mm-hmm. to receive the seed of the gospel. And, um, you know, it's the one thing about every human being. It's, you know, we go through trouble. You know, again, Christ, you know, John 16, 33, while you're in the world, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And um, even Job said, as the, as the sparks fly upward, so a man is born to trouble. Um, and so when, when the seed of God's word gets near a life, then the circumstances become accentuated and they begin to soften mm-hmm. the heart and begin to, you know, uh, prepare the heart to receive the hope and the truth. I mean, again, what, what is the apex of the human plight? You know, death, you know, it's, I mean, that's the, you know, that is the, the biggest challenge of the human race is death. And, and, um, you know, second Timothy one ten says that Christ has abolished death and brought life and immortality through the light of the Amen. gospel. And so, you know, the, the backdrop of, some hard times that people are going through um, becomes the very foundation for their heart to be softened, to receive the Lord, you know, and to cry out uncle, you know, it's like, man, life is hard. Um, I've said it before. And it's, it's uh, one of those statements where some Christians kind of look at you like sideways and go, what? And some Christians go, yes, amen. You know, but you know, I can barely make it with Jesus. I don't know how anybody tries to make it without it. <laughs> no comment. You know? um, I have so been there. <laughs> I have so been yeah. there. Well, and, and, and I know that we're, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us. And we have been given the victory. So I don't want that to sound. I know that to some Christians, you know, they feel like, oh, no, you got to have stronger faith than that. The Lord has given us every, you know, all things that pertain to life and godliness, all, uh, all spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. You know, all that his, is his is ours. And I get good that. And great, but, but life is hard. Yeah, God is and that's, good. And I mean, that statement alone, I mean, I could barely make it with Jesus. I mean, <laughs> I have so been there, especially, you know, when, when, when life is just, uh, when, when I, when I walked away from the Lord and I walked away for a period of five years, dude, guys, I walked away because life had just knocked me like out of like, left field gave me a couple of sucker punches and then left me for dead 
And that, I can honestly tell you, I get it. I totally get it. There are places where you're just going, I can't do this. I can't move. I cannot go on. I am done. And so, you know, um, to, to, to the person that doesn't know Christ, I don't know what you're going through. And I honestly, I don't know what you're facing. I really don't. But I, I, I said it, I've said it in other episodes, and I'll say it again. Guys, if you have questions, if you have struggles, if you have things that are unresolved, this is why this show is here. This is why we are here. We get it. Life is a bear. It'll rip you apart. But, you know, the only answer I have to even come close to even somewhat making sense is Jesus. So, I mean, Amen. Pastor, do you have any uh, final final thoughts, any final words before uh, we wrap this up? Well, you know, uh, just right out of the Word of God, Lamentations 3, you know, he's pondering the situation. Um, in the middle of chapter 3, he says, uh, hmm, he says, I've become the ridicule of all my people. Their taunting song all the mm-hmm. day in verse 14 of Lamentations 3. He has filled me with bitterness. He has made me drink wormwood. He has also broken my teeth with gravel and covered me with ashes. That's <laughs> a bad day right there. And he says, you move my soul far from peace. And so there's no peace. I have forgotten my prosperity. Um, and I said, my strength and, and my hope have perished from the Lord. I remember my affliction and roaming the wormwood and the gall. And, and then he says in verse 20, it starts to shift. My soul still remembers and sinks within me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not mm. consumed. His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait, should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke of his youth. Let him sit alone and keep silent. Because God has laid it on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. So it's like keep yourself from reacting and overreacting, underreacting. And, and um, you know, when we give our lives to the Lord, we're not our own. And, um, you know, I would say to the Christian, um, don't like the, Peter says, you know, don't think it's strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. You know, if you're a human being, you're going to have trouble. If you're a Christian, that means you're a human being and a Christian. Now you've got double trouble. So don't be surprised when you begin to, when you begin to get after the things of God, you know, Christ set himself apart and he went in the wilderness to pray and fast and prepare for his public ministry. Who followed him up that mountain? Satan himself. He was tempted, a threefold temptation. He spoke the word of God. It is written. It is written. It is written. Angels came and ministered to him. He had supernatural intervention as he warred Satan with the word of God. And uh, he came out on the other side, uh, ready to begin his public ministry. And God was faithful to him. And so, you know, Christians need to hang in there. We need to, the Lord spoke to my heart this morning. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to share this in this podcast. Um, we've got to feed our spirit. I listened to Maddie Montgomery when it, I think it was his first CD that he did. Um, he's the singer from For Today, and it was uh, uh, "Prepare the Way." And um, and I listened to all the tracks off that same CD with "Prepare the Way" and the resistance. And it, it, when I hear him speak and with the music, it just it just mm-hmm. feeds my spirit. And uh, I've been on a thing lately where the past couple months. I, I haven't been listening to music and I haven't been even listening to Bible studies in the car. I just spend time with the Lord. I pray, I worship, I pour my heart out, I intercede, I petition, I pray, bring my heart to God, confess, repent, worship some more. But um, lately, um, I, I started listening to Maddie Montgomery, one of our pastors in training, wanted me to send that link to him. 
because he remembered I turned him on to Maddie before. And uh, I listened to it for about two days in a row, two times through, and it just fed my spirit. I could feel like like there was a Hulk spirit in me, like rising up and and really uh, strong in the truth of God and the grace of God and, and, and understanding the nature and the character of God and the promise of God. And, you know, Christians need to, to, to feed their spirit. Remember, Jesus told Peter and John and James, hey, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so um, we need to feed the spirit, not feed the flesh. We need to consecrate ourselves and, 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 and spend time in the word and not just read the Bible like a, a chapter a day to keep the devil away, but spend time in the word, meditating on the scripture, hiding the scriptures in our heart through memorization standing on the scriptures in prayer, sharing the word of God. What we share, we own. And uh, I really believe that's one of the missing gems of of the first century church. You know, they didn't have um, internet and books and Bibles and Bible study resources. They they talked about God all the time. And that's why the word went so deep in their hearts. And we need to discover sharing the word of God, sharing what God has told us, testifying mm. to one another, um, that's, uh, you know, like the Deuteronomy six, Deuteronomy eight deal, but to the non-Christian, I would say, um, you know, um, everything in this earth, everything in this human experience, um, is pointing mm-hmm. to Jesus. Everything points to Jesus. And it, the Bible says from him, through him and to him are all things. You know, we all ask the questions, where, where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? Answer. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Um, he, he created us. He made us. He breathed in dirt in Genesis and, and, and made Adam. Um, you know, uh, he made us, uh, to know him. He, he gave us the earth for us to enjoy, but he gave, he made us for him to enjoy. So where do we come from? The Lord. Um, why are we here? To know the Lord, uh, to serve the Lord, to reflect the Lord to be in a relationship with the Lord. And um, where are we going? The Lord. Um, We are doing a chapel series at the the city mission here. And we're talking about knowing God by knowing his names. And we're, we're doing the I am's of revelation. And the last one in revelations 22, he says, I am coming quickly and I'm bringing my reward with me. I am the beginning and the end. The, uh, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end and the first and the last Mm -hmm. God is coming quickly and he's bringing his reward. He's going to bless us for what we allow him to do through us. And if someone doesn't know the Lord, the the whole reason for our existence is to know God's love through his son. And, um, it's not my job to cause someone to seek the Lord. It's the father's job. Jesus said it, John six, unless my father draws a man, he will not come. But I do know this, that God is not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance and they know the truth that is in Jesus, that God loved us so much. He didn't leave us in the death grip of sin and wrath. God does not want to judge or send one person away from his presence. That's why he sent his son to pay the price that we could not pay, to taste death for every man and to 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 pay uh, and satisfy divine justice with his sacrifice at the cross, the shed blood of Jesus Christ is the way to be forgiven and to be spiritually healed and made right with God. It's our, it's our only move. And when we receive that, then we receive everything that we need to walk forward in victory, whatever we're facing in this life. But whatever situation you're facing, it is nothing compared to the impending doom of someone who does not know Christ. Our hope needs to be in him. And, um, there's nothing like it. I mean, I've been 35 years with the Lord sister and, uh, and it's been hard, but I wouldn't trade one second of it, um, not one second of it for any, for, for, to be the wealthiest man on the planet, any power, any position, any status. I wouldn't trade one second of my life with Christ for, for everything Amen. in the world. I, I don't think I could add anything onto that. Uh, I, 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 you know, I completely agree. Um, both, you know, regarding what you said to the, to the believer and the non believer alike. And guys, it, like I've said, if you have uh, questions, if you have things that, 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 that come up out of this episode that you think we didn't address or that you just are like, yeah, but look, we're here to answer them. 
And I'm quite sure that, you know, Pastor Larry would do his best if, if I forward him a question that someone has for him uh, to, 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 to offer an answer. So, guys, email us. Email us um, at info at Unresolved Life or Teresa at Unresolved Life, and we will get back to you or do the best we can to get back to you. And with that, guys, um, thank you so much for listening, and we will speak again next time. God bless you. God bless. You've been listening to the Unresolved Life Podcast. To catch all our past shows, go to unresolved.life. That's unresolved.life.